Okay, so now we have Brian Davis, who has entered into the realm of bidding for the Washington Commanders after the bid was accepted from Josh Harris. What does all of this mean? We're going to break it down in this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. My name is Greg. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I try to put out videos on a regular basis. What does regular basis mean? What well, it means is as much as I possibly can. How, how about that? With that said, I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get into it. So we're talking about Brian Davis. Uh, Brian Davis was... Um, if you don't know him, he is an ex-NBA uh, basketball player. I knew him more from his days at Duke. Uh, never really got into NBA basketball much after all of the greats like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, all of them left. But uh, Brian Davis, um, I watched him, both him and Christian Lechner uh, play at Duke. I met them um, at uh, my, actually my high school I think it was back in 1992. I got their autographs and everything. I don't know where those autographs are today. But anyway, that's what I know about Brian Davis. Um, I had no idea about his legal ventures until um, I heard this uh, story coming out just a couple of days ago from Darren Haynes that he was reporting that Brian Davis had submitted a $7 billion bid for the Washington Commanders. And this was submitted back in March. Why did we not hear anything about the $7 billion bid for the Washington Commanders back in March. And then we hear about an accepted bid from uh, Dan Snyder, a non-exclusive bid exception um, or acceptance uh, for the Josh Harris group, but nevertheless, an accepted bid that was lower. That was a $6.05 billion bid for Josh Harris group, but nothing about the $7 billion bid and what's even more crazier about this bid is supposedly it's all liquid like the first billion dollars is all in cash and it would be sent to dan snyder 24 hours after the accepted bid or the acceptance of this bid and then uh about i think it was like a week later the rest of the seven billion dollars would be released to him number one why would he bid $7 billion when everybody else at that point was either bidding $5.6 billion and not quite the $6 billion, and then he's coming in and bidding $7 billion, but yet in April we hear that the bid for $6.05 billion was accepted. This makes absolutely no sense to me. And Someone in business can explain this to me. It makes no sense. So now, you know, Bank of America is stepping in, trying to, you know, vet all of this. We've got reports coming out saying, oh, yeah, you know, well, he sold off a lot of his business ventures, and it, you know, turned out that he was worth $50 billion. Well, that doesn't make sense, because then of all the legal issues that Brian Davis has had in the past, he's been sued by several pro athletes for millions of dollars and he has defaulted on loans that were not even worth a million dollars there are loans that were a few thousand dollars that he didn't even pay back you know supposedly there was um there was real estate in durham north carolina that both him and christian lakner um partnered with to develop and all of that was left empty and then they wound up having to sell that back at a loss. I think they bought it for like $11.1 million and they wound up selling it for $10 million. So they, they took a loss on that. And then there was another a business venture with Brian Davis where he was going to develop commercial property and this was five years ago and that commercial property today still lays barren nothing has been developed 
So where is all of this money? Where is it magically? Where's this $50 billion that he is supposedly worth? And, you know, you get reports on Twitter from these blue check marks that are like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's legit. It's all legit. Where? Tell me where it's legit at. You know, to me, I think what this was, this was a last-minute ploy to try to up the bid on, you know, the the commander, the sale of the commanders. What's more is that not only that, but... Brian Davis was going to fully identify Daniel Snyder. What does that mean? He was going to take on all of the legal issues, basically, uh, him and the commanders, and Dan Snyder was going to be completely free like of all of that. Why would he do that? It's a very unusual. Even the other owners of the league were like, there's no way we would ever agree to anything like that. So why would Brian Davis come in and do that? There's no way that any of the other owners would vote for this. Not at all. And you can't tell me that this just does not sound very odd. And then, you know, of course, I also read some other tweets about, you know, you just don't want to, uh, you don't want to have an African-American owner. Well, what about Magic Johnson? Last I heard... He was going to be an African-American owner. Um, Now, if you're talking about a majority owner, well, there's no way that Brian Davis is worth $50 billion. Prove me wrong on this. There's no way he's worth $50 billion. He would have to get other investors that have more money than he does, which means he would not wind up being a majority owner anyway. So what difference would it be? The money has already been vested, from what I hear, for uh, even though it's going to be fully financed, it's already vested under the Josh Harris group. So why in the world would we want to even go with this outlandish thing from somebody who's had so many legal issues with money, with, you know, and, and was sued and won or or sued and lost the lawsuit against somebody like Sean Merriman for $4 million. I don't even know if Sean Merriman got that money back or not, but there is no way that Brian Davis would actually become owner of the Washington Commanders. You can rest easy on that. Um, I would rather, you know, if, if we're talking about wanting to have diversity, we're talking about wanting to have a minority owner. I would rather it go with the way of the Harris, uh, Rails, and Johnson group where maybe eventually Johnson somehow is able to work himself up to the majority owner. I'd rather go that route because I think Johnson has had some success um, as a owner in sports franchises, and that would be the perfect one. I grew up watching Magic Johnson play, and I rooted for him in the Lakers anyway. So, you know, there you go. Um, Be a perfect thing for for me in my childhood. But anyway, uh, I I just can't see this. It's just, it's dumb. Um, Anybody who believes this, just, they need to vet this. They need to vet this fully because there is no way, no way whatsoever that this is legitimate. Um, I think I would bet all the money I have, and I don't have a lot of money, folks. So I think I would bet all the money that I had that there's no way that this gets approved. Um, And if you want to, you know, step out of the, you know, what is it, step out of the smoking into the flames or something like that, let Brian Davis be the owner of this team, and you think that it was bad with Daniel Snyder? Wow. Wow. You have somebody like Brian Davis who has been in so many legal issues. You would probably turn around and see another three or four years down the road and yet another owner having to come in and buy the team anyway because there's no way, there is no way that Brian Davis would be able to be good for ownership for this team. Not with the track record he's had. I mean, let's, no. No, there's just no way that you go with this. Uh, Folks, it's crazy. It is is crazy. I hope that we 
figure something out. We learn something soon with all of this, so I can stop talking about it. But I am going to come out with a video on some mock drafts that's coming out soon. Just stick with me. I will see you soon. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.